Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in DxO Photo Lab 4 and continuing my experiments with this product as a potential replacement for Lightroom, which I'm going to be leaving as soon as I can figure out where it is I'm going. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to be using DxO. But one of the great things about DxO is that they also own another set of products. It's a group of eight plugins that do different things called the Nick Collection. Now, it is sold separately. If you buy DxO Photo Lab and you want the Nick Collection, you have to buy the Nick Collection separately. They are two separate purchases. However, it's a great, great collection of products. And the one I'm talking about today is called Color Effects Pro. And as I've done these DxO videos, which you can check out in that playlist if you'd like, a number of people have asked me, hey, you're talking about DxO. Are you going to do any videos that shows using some of the plugins from the Nick Collection with DxO? And of course, the answer is, yes, I am. Uh, here's the first one. So this one is about Color Effects Pro, which, as the name implies, gives you great color effects to apply to your photos. Now, if you've been here before and have seen me edit photos, you know I like color. Color's my thing. I love big, bold colors and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, I've got a long history with Color Effects Pro because I bought it, uh, the Nick Collection, many years ago. We're talking uh, eight years ago, maybe? I don't know what it was. It was way before... Um, I ever had Luminar, uh, in fact, way before Luminar was even available as a product, and I used it all the time. I'd build an HDR in Photomatix, and then I would ship that product or that photo over to Color Effects Pro and do all my stuff. Um, and that's that was my workflow for five or six years, probably. Now, to be clear, I'm not leaving Luminar at all. I'm going to leave Lightroom, but I'm going to keep using Luminar as my primary editor, for, especially for the majority of my color work. But what I want to demonstrate here is that if you're using DxO and you have the Nick Collection, you can really do great things with Color Effects Pro as the plugin here. So let me get started. Here's the photo. I'm in DxO, and I just want to do a few things here. I just kind of want to bump up the lighting a little bit, and um, I'm not also going to go into Selective Tone. Put on the highlights, maybe pull up the shadows a little bit. I'm just getting a little bit more visibility into the uh, photo and Clearview Plus. I can never say that, but it, it's great, kind of like a dehaze kind of look, but just be really careful with it because it does seem to create a bit of noise. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit of contrast. And in fact, I'm going to pull this Clear View Plus down a little bit. Anyway, that's where I am. And so you do have quite a few color options here if you would like to. Uh, use them in DxO, and they work great. I've used them in a number of my videos, and I'll continue to use them, but there are times when you want to do certain things that you just can't do here, or you can do more easily elsewhere, and that's when I go to the Nick Collection. So if you have that collection, it'll install as a plugin, and you can get to it if you have the fi film strip down below. If you see my mouse down here, just click on Nick Collection, and it'll come up and ask you which one, and I'm going to say, I want Color Effects Pro. And that's where we're going next. Okay, here we go. You show up in Color Effects Pro. Again, it is a plugin, which means when you're finished with this, you hit save, it drops you back into DxO, which I love. It works really smoothly. But the first thing I'm going to do is get brilliance and warmth. And I'm going to give this about an 11 or so on saturation, about a 30 or so on warmth, because it was a nice sunset. And I want to pop that a little bit more. And I love this perceptual saturation. To me, it's a little bit like a vibrance kind of slider. I'm going to about 17 there, but you can see that there's the before and there's the current state. It's already much more colorful and warm, which I like quite a bit. But of course, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to use here. And um, I'm not going to call this a highlight reel, um, my edit here in Color Effects Pro, but the tools or filters that I'm using here are some of my favorites that I used all those years ago um, on all those HDRs that I used to build. So I'm going to click Add Filter. And the next one I'm going to get is Pro Contrast. Uh, which is quite powerful, as the name implies. So I'm going to take correct contrast. I'm looking at my notes here. I'm going to about 42, 43, something like that. And then dynamic contrast, I'm going to go something similar, maybe like 40, 41. You can kind of see what it's doing to the photo. Let me turn that off. There's before, and there's current state. Just a nice little pop of contrast. Even though this is a color tool, contrast impacts colors. It's really handy to have that. There's another one down here called tonal contrast that I've used a lot as well, but I think pro contrast really fit the bill on this photo. Okay, once again, I'm going to click add filter, and now I'm going to go get sunlight. This is one that I've used a lot and just absolutely love it, and for strength, I'm going to give it a little bit more strength, so I'm going to go like 27 or so. I'm going to leave the temperature where it is, and the brightness, and contrast, and saturation, all that. In fact, I'm going to leave where it is. You see how this is kind of building out. This is a Sony RAW file 
that was in DxO. When it goes over to ColorFX Pro, this is a TIFF, as you can see down here at the bottom. Um, it actually renames it with the, uh, the name of your file and then an underscore NIK for NIC software. But let me show you what Sunlight did. There it is before, and there it is color state, a little brighter, a little bit warmer. It's getting a little bit of kick of that sunset feel, which I like quite a bit. Now I'm gonna go get another filter, and this one is called Skylight. So I'm gonna click to add that, and it defaults to 20, and I'm just gonna bump that up a little bit to like 27 or 28. So if I turn that off, there it is before, and there it is color, uh, excuse me, current state. It's, uh, I think of Skylight a little bit like a golden hour filter, where it just adds a little bit of a nice warm golden glow across the photo. I think it looks great, I love that. Speaking of glow, that's the next thing we're gonna do. One of my all-time favorites is Glamour Glow. And what I always did on my HDRs was I would apply this at the end. It creates a little bit of mood, a little bit of shadow, kind of the romantic lighting. It reminds me of like an Orton effect kinda, or like a mystical, if you're familiar with those, like in Luminar. So I'm gonna go glow at about 48 or something like that, and give it a little bit of warmth as well in the glow, maybe just like a 15 or 16. So not a massive difference, but there's the before. You can see a little bit more visibility, a little bit more detail like in the tree branches and that sort of thing on that side of the lake. And now it's a little bit more in shadow. It's a little bit moodier. I just kind of like it. And then one more filter I'm gonna add here, and this one is Indian Summer. And I had so much fun in the day with this tool. It's, it's really cool at changing up some of those colors. You can see what it's doing here. Let me turn this off. All the green stuff, there it is, especially that big tree on the far left side of the frame, if you look at that. And now it's basically converted it to look like fall. And so I love doing that anyway. I've done that on photos for years. It's, you can do that with the HSL by moving, moving hue around and adjusting the yellows and the oranges and the greens. But if you can just turn on a filter and click once and kind of do that, I think that's pretty neat. So I'm actually gonna leave it at the de default setting. There's a few different options here. I think the one that it uh, defaults to, which is number one and at 50 looks fine. So let me show you what we did to this photo here. I mean, we came a long way to be honest. Um, there it is, very blue. As you can see, it was sunset. The sun is in the frame over there, far uh, in the right, about to go behind that uh, building, I guess. You know, a lot of the warmth is lost and that sort of thing. And now we've brought back a lot of the warmth, added some warmth, in fact, and I think just made it overall a little bit more interesting photo. So I like that quite a bit. I'm actually really happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, drop it back to DxO. And now we're gonna make a couple of more minor adjustments. So it sits right here next to the original. It is a TIFF file, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and close this film strip because I don't need it. And now I'm back with that edited photo. And all I really wanna do is just come in here and maybe put on the highlights just a tiny bit, maybe pull up the shadows a tiny bit, and maybe add just a tiny, tiny little bit of contrast, maybe something about like that. And that's really it for this one, my friends. I could probably play around with the photo for a while, just trying to make it different. But um, if you go and uh, that's the that's the one that came over from ColorFX Pro, and there it is, current state. But if you want to go compare that with the original, there we go. That's basically where I started. Now that again is before my any changes. So there's that, and there it is now. And so that's my final. I actually brought the highlights back a little bit. I think it was getting a little bit too washed out, kind of gloomy looking in the sky. And I definitely want some brightness there because of the setting sun. So that's it, my friends. Just a quick example of some of the fun tools and filters that exist in ColorFX Pro, how that works in combination with DxO Photo Lab 4. It's fun, it's powerful. Hope it gives you some ideas about what you can do with your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you around. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Have fun editing and adios.